the reality is, is that not everybody is cut out for that, okay? And so, you know, when I see many Jews who are not particularly troubled by these issues or kind of bored by them, um, that's okay. However, I do believe that there is a very high form of Avodah Hashem that involves critical thinking, that involves all sorts of thinking, that involves a seeking of, of truth. And, 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 and it's only through that hard work of seeking the truth that we are able to fulfill the dictum of la'ovdecha be'emet. That's how we serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And for that segment of the population, which is not small, it's very, very important to have these resources, have resources think, to address these issues. I think um, like when you see inconsistencies, let's say in the Decalogue, the different versions of the Decalogue in the Torah, you can really say, okay, but these are just, they're just expanding on the original Decalogue, fine. The issue I think that a lot of people have is when they find that like the census or anytime the Torah uses some type of calculation or timeline that doesn't match up, that's where people have the biggest problem. And this is part of the first question that Bensi asked, which you didn't get to the history of the word history in Judaism and how the Torah kind of wasn't written for the modern person. It was written for, you know, people, the people of the past. So could you explain that? Yeah. Let, let me begin with a, a story about the first girl I dated, okay? She used to say, be reasonable, do things my way. And um, it didn't really work out, right? <laughs> um, because you can't go through life expecting everyone to do things your way. Why do I mention that? Because, because as modern people, all of us born you know, in the late 20th century, we come to everything we do and everything we think about and everything we read with assumptions that have been just part of us from the day we've been born because it's the culture around us. And we are unaware of the degree to which so much of our thinking is anachronistic, is a product of the time and place that we live in. And that people who lived a few generations ago thought about things in radically different ways, okay? I mean, just to give you one small example of this, okay? that I mean, nothing to do with Tanakh or anything, okay? But when we say that the word homosexual, okay? That word didn't exist 150 years ago. The idea that someone had an identity as such did not exist. You say, how, how could that possibly be? Or if I say to you that um, uh, in the late 40s, when, when people came over from Europe after the Shoah, nobody called them survivors. That word did not exist. That is a word that came into our lexicon only in the 1970s. And there's reasons for it. You say, what? Come on. Yes, it's true. The way in which we think about the world changes over time radically. And it's also true with regard to things having to do with just the things you said. People look at numbers in the Torah. And, oh my goodness, the things just don't work out. They seem to contradict, they don't add up. And they're like, this is, I mean, this is just olive bait. You know, if they can't even get the numbers straight, then how are we supposed to reply, rely on anything else? And, and, and so what we need to understand is that our ways of reading and thinking might not be the ways in which many, many, many people before us thought and wrote especially about numbers in the Bible. Can I just give an example, okay, of what I mean, okay, that I think will be a little, uh, will be really illuminating and surprising. Um, I, I want to talk about this very issue, numbers, right? So we say, we look at a number and we take it seriously. We take it statistically. We take it quantitatively, okay? Let, 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 me, let, me, let me show you what, what the Tanakh 